Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. Well, I'm over in the garage and I uh, wanted to put a fresh edge on a blade. Uh, I'm in the process of restoring a few number six planes and this blade is not in the best shape, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to sort of show you the process I use and we will be using a bench grinder. Listen, don't be hating grinders. They've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Without grinders we wouldn't have hardly anything. Basically all it is is a wheel that they made out of stone and they found out that when they put metal against it, it ground it away. So, what would we need? Well, I got a rag I put on my lap so that when I'm grinding I can wipe the blade. You won't, you won't see it in the camera but I wipe the blade on it. I also have a little dish of water, regular H2O. You want to keep your blade cool. Another thing too is if you have a bench grinder or if you're going to use somebody's bench grinder you may need a uh, dressing stone or a diamond dresser to flatten and clean the stone when it's spinning, okay? And what that does, it opens up fresh abrasive so you can cut faster and cleaner. So, without further ado, it probably would help to have a square on hand too because you're going to want to check to see if your blade is square. Now this one is slightly out of square and it has a nick in it. Don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit out high on this side and there's a good nick in there. So, how I do it is I don't go in straight at 90 degrees to get that nick out. I'll go in at a I, I want to be down here at 25 degrees, but what I do is I come up close to the vertical and I just freehand grind that front edge until all the nicks are out and it is square. I eyeball it, I do whatever is necessary. The back of the blade is pretty well pitted too, so this is not going to be one of my best blades ever, but I'll work on that at the bench with the diamond plate and uh, if I have to tap it out I'll tap it out with a hammer. Well actually a soft face hammer. So right now it looks in that just those few seconds I'm a lot closer to being square and the nick is almost gone. The reason why I do this just so you understand the geometry of a blade, and I use a uh, angle finder to see where I am on, on angles, okay, I don't know, okay, so you can get these, they make little brass ones, they're not very big, about the size of a silver dollar, but if you work only on the bevel, to get that nick out, you're going to be generating a lot of heat. So the way I do it is I get rid of that without having a very fine edge at the top. And that way I can grind up the bevel and that's pretty darn close to square. I can grind up to the bevel now I don't know if you can see it, but remember the old saying, um, a sharp edge does not reflect light. But you see that reflection? That's the blunt edge of the, uh, what I just ground, of the blade. So now it's time to work on the bevel. So here we go. How I do it is I use this. This is my jig. This is my fancy jig. It rides underneath here. 
I lay the blade on my two fingers. Well, actually, I lay it on my hand, and then I press up against that steady rest, and then I start grinding. Sometimes I'll actually hold, not press, but hold my fingers up close to the to the front of the blade. Because if I start feeling heat, okay, if I start feeling heat, that's when I quench it in the water. Wipe it on my towel and then keep going. If you're real careful, you sometimes do not even need to go in the water. You can you can cut nice and cool. But if the stone gets loaded with steel particles, you'll see it turn gray. It starts cutting slower and slower and slower, and that means you're going to be generating heat. So you can see I'm, I'm starting to get there now, a bevel. I still have a long way to go. This doesn't take very long if you're not trying to explain it and talk to somebody. You just sit there and focus on it. In a few minutes you're done. So, for you who are unplugged purists in your workshop, you can stay that way and still have the benefit of using grinders. You can hire someone else to do your grinding. You can find a maker space near you that has bench grinders. There are also hand crank bench grinders, but I've I've got one, but I haven't set it up. I just I like my pigtail apprentice here, Mr. Rikon. Works cheap. He works for electrons, protons, neutrons, whatever it is that comes through the wire. And he's not overly expensive. I also have a buffing wheel on the other side so I can polish things which is a whole nother story. But, if you want to do this unplugged, the process is simple. This is a 60 grit stone. That's the coarsest stone I have. So a similar process would be if you went and got a, a 60 grit sanding belt about three inches wide and a piece of MDF and you glue it down or just clamp it tight and you can you can make a wooden wedge at 25 degrees or 30 degrees, whatever angle you want to uh, grind at, and you can just find that angle and just go back and forth on the sandpaper. And the blade will heat up. You'll, you will have to keep water handy. You can, heat, you can heat that up to the point where you will burn yourself. And you just grind it away. And I'm just noticing here minor hints that this might be 
Yes, it is. It's a laminated blade. It's an old Stanley, probably around 1930s. So that's even more of a reason to keep it cool because that laminated steel was a good hard steel and they, uh, they heat treated them pretty good. Now, if you happen to use a bench grinder and you do start seeing the, the, the steel change colors and it happens see if you if you can can't touch it it's too hot it happens in a blink of an eye you'll be grinding along and then all of a sudden it turns blue but if you watch and you start seeing it turn a little bit of a light straw color quench immediately. Once it gets to purple, I mean you still can quench it immediately, but you've gone over the temperature of the tempering process. See there's hardening, which means they heat the steel till it's over a certain temperature and I can't tell you that temperature because every steel is different but it's in the area of 12 1400 degrees Fahrenheit and then they quench it now some of the older some steels they quench in water some steels they quench in oil and some steels they let air cool once it's quenched it will be as hard as it can get it'll be too hard to use because it'll crack so they they let it sit they let it cool then they put it in an oven at somewhere between 350 degrees to maybe as high as four and a quarter for a period of time to temper it and that's what makes it slightly softer again but it's still harder than if you if you didn't temp if you didn't harden it at all. So hope that helps. But if you do happen to change the color of your tools by overheating them, don't panic. If you catch it early enough and it's just a light line across the front, just go ahead and hone as usual and not worry about it. It might not hold an edge the way you would like, but you will be honing it again soon and you can you can get past that. You work you work past it. Now if you if you heat the whole tool up till it then you've got to re reheat it, reheat treat it. So we're like almost there. I'm getting there. When I get to the certain point and I will see if I can't show you the laminated steel. You might be able to see it on camera. You should. Still got a little, sh I don't know if you can see that, but if you can see that little shiny edge in the front, I'll move it real slow. It's a little shiny edge right in the middle. That means it's not fully sharpened all the way across. So yes, if you're uh, if you're going to do this unplugged, you just need a, a good flat surface and some coarse abrasive to 
basically you're, you'll be grinding your primary bevel. It does not have to be a fine grind. It just has to be ground. I still see, see up in here, up here there's a lot of little pits and that's going to always leave a nick here and there. It's probably not going to be one of my better user blades. Not sure if I'm going to keep or if I'm going to sell the plane. If I sell it, I'll probably offer the person the option of buying a brand new hawk blade from me. If you need any hawk blades, send me a message. I got them in stock. They're great. Some of the finest tool steels out there. Yeah, I think... I mean, I'm there now. It's just those little pits and are showing nicks. I got some magic I can do, but I'll give it a few more passes. So the other day, we, uh, we wake up Saturday morning, we had no internet. So, it didn't come back all day Saturday. Sunday? Nope, nope. Monday, mid-morning, our internet comes back. So I wonder if they're going to give me a discount. Because technically, they did not provide the service that I was paying for. Right, take that one to the, to the judge. All right, now it has a little bit of, of camber to it right now, and I want to take some of that out. I don't mind a little. Because I can always put camber back at the bench stone. The one thing you don't want is to have it have it hollow. You don't mind a little bit of camber. see if you can see the lamination. I think I think that's as far as I need to go. Let's see if you can see the lamination. Try holding this up. Can you see the laminated steel right about an eighth of an inch back from the uh, I don't know how which direction to even hold this stuff. I'm not a camera technical person. There you go. Should be able to see it about an eighth of an inch up back from the tip. So that's the uh, hollow ground, 25 degree primary bevel. Now I'll take it inside, hone the back. I might have to put a Micro bevel on the back, maybe a little bit more than the ruler, ruler technique. I'll try the ruler technique first, and if it gets rid of most of the pitting, we'll be all right. But if not, I may have to put a little bit more of an angle. So that's about it for today. Don't be hating grinders. I couldn't do this in the amount of time that we got together here today 
if I was doing it with a piece of sandpaper and not talking to you. So, um, if you uh, don't have one, maybe a neighbor does, if, or a brother, or a cousin, or a grandfather, an uncle, who knows. And uh, once a month, or once every couple months, go over, have dinner, spend a little time together in the workshop. And as always, if you found something useful here, educational, or just flat out entertaining, give it the old thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put it down there in the uh, comment section. And if you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways to do it. The biggest way is to share the videos. And head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Sharpen your tools first. Walter out.